Now, it's my great honor to introduce our chaplain of the day, one of our colleagues, a gentleman that's opened, I think you, we talked about maybe five times, with the opening day chaplain about five times at least uh, over the years. One of the things that I, when I always think about Mac Jackson, you know, when you look at someone and you, and you um, think about whom they are and, and what they're about, I always think about surprise that must have been on Mac Jackson's face when down in Tennell, Georgia, he started his Sunday morning services. And he thought he had done something wrong on Saturday night, evidently, because he was a little nervous when he saw those state patrol cars and that black suburban pull up out front. He thought he was getting picked up, I guess. But the speaker of this house, David Ralston, had unexpectedly, and a little bit of a surprise, I would say, uh, attended Reverend Jackson's um, Sunday morning service. So, Mac, I know that was something that's been on your heart and on your mind over the years and certainly a great day for your congregation. You know, Mac, Chairman Jackson, leads a, a congregation down in Tennel. He, along with his wife, Valerie, at St. James Christian Fellowship, Lord's House. Isn't that right? That's what I thought. You know, Mac, uh, I know in his community, as I've spoken to many of the folks that he represents from, from middle Georgia, respect Mac as a legislator. They also respect Mac as a man of God who works extremely well and, and extremely often in all parts of his community, ensuring that he represents his congregation represents his constituents, and he represents his congregation in the Lord's house. Now, when he puts on his other jacket, he comes to this place. And he is a friend to everyone in this chamber. He is respected by each member of this chamber. And I would say he's loved as a member of this family by us all. So he is a man of God who serves in the Lord, Lord's house. He's also a man of the people who serves in the people's house. I would tell you the first is more important. He's a man of God who serves his people in the Lord's house. With no further ado, my friend, a man of the people, a man of God, Reverend Mac Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and good morning to everyone, and welcome to another special session. I'm just going to be short here. I was reading last night in the book of Genesis, chapter 37, and we find there that Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told his dream to his brothers, but instead of being happy for him, it says that they hated him. Then he dreamed another dream, and still they envied him. So they conspired against him and put him in a pit. But then Judah said, let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and make some profit off him. And as we follow the story, the Ishmaelites sold Joseph to a man named Potiphar in Egypt. And in Genesis chapter 39, verse 2, it says, And the Lord was with Joseph, and his master saw that the Lord was with him. And the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. But Mr. Potiphar had a problem in his house, and it was Mrs. Potiphar, for she had her eyes on Joseph. But Joseph refused her several times, for he said, you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? You see, Joseph had his mind stayed on God through all his ordeals. But one day, Ms. Potiphar caught Joseph alone. And, Ms. Pot and Mr. Potiphar was off traveling, but he ran out of his coat. But she lied on him, and Mr. Potiphar cast him into prison. But in verse 21 of chapter 39, it says, But the Lord was with Joseph, and showed him mercy, and gave him favor. And there he met the butler, he met the baker, who both had dreams that Joseph interpreted for both of them. And when Pharaoh had a dream, the chief butler remembered Joseph. So Joseph interprets Pharaoh's dream and gives him a plan to save the nation of Egypt. Pharaoh made Joseph ruler over all the land of Egypt. 
Even his brothers had to come to him to buy. They had fear because of what they had done to Joseph. Now, can you imagine what was happening in Mr. Potiphar's house when they were sitting around the breakfast table and they were reading the Egyptian journal and constitution? And there was little Joe as prime minister of Egypt. Now, I don't know about you, but I would have wanted to choke Mrs. Potiphar if I had been Mr. Potiphar because now they have to honor Joseph as the prime minister of Egypt. So his brothers come to him, and in Genesis chapter 50, verse 10, Joseph said, Fear not, for am I in the place of God. They thought that Joseph was going to try and do something back to them because of what they had done to him. But Joseph realized that in order to walk with God, you can't do people like they do you. He had to forgive them despite of. He says, but as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. You see, if you just hold your peace, God will take care of you and God will fight your battle. Because I read what Paul said, all things work together for the good of them who are called according to his purpose and love the Lord. So if you'll learn to hold your peace despite what's going on all around you, despite what people say about you, you hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battles. The Bible says love your enemies. Pray for those who despitefully use you because unforgiveness is like you drinking poison and hoping the other fellow will die. It will never happen. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come together to do the work of the people's house, we thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for the leading of the Holy Spirit, Father. Honor everything that we do here, Father. Let it be said by the people of the state of Georgia that they honored you first of all, as Joseph honored you, Lord. And be with us, Lord, and give us the wisdom that we need, Father. And we'll be sure and give you all the praise, honor, and the glory. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.